48% of the Muslim in the United States of America believe that they are Muslim first, they are American second. Our purpose is to change this culture because they're infidel and what they're doing is not pleasing to Allah and we are the soldier of Allah who will make them do it. Kamal Salim was born in Lebanon to a devout Muslim family. As early as four years old, he remembers sitting at the kitchen table while his mother taught him about the Quran and his duty to Allah and Jihad. From my childhood, my mom said, one day you'll be a martyr, my son. You will die for the sake of Allah and you will exalt Islam. She said, if you kill a Jew, my son, but your hand will light up before the throne of Allah and the host of heaven will celebrate what you have done. Kamal was seven when his parents sent him to Muslim training camps to learn to use weapons and engage and kill the enemy. The boys were also taught another, more subtle form of warfare. We were training for what's called culture jihad, which is shifting cultures. Culture jihad is, it's unlike the sword, unlike the rifle, it is the jihad that will come into your world. By his 20s, Kamal was chosen to wage cultural jihad on America. In Islam, uh, liberty, freedom, monarchy, all these are idols and these must be brought down. So the liberty that you have in the United States of America, it's, it's anti-Islam, you know, so America must be changed. So I moved to the Bible Belt specifically. The Bible Belt was the strongest of strongest. Uh, that's where the, uh, the stout Christians are. And I want to take on the best of the best because I considered myself as, as a sword of Islam. I thought I'm anointed, I'm unique, I'm selected. I'm coming to a country and a culture to change it and I have the power of Allah with me. In the early 1980s, Kamal entrenched himself in a small Midwestern town. He began targeting men from poor neighborhoods to recruit them to the Muslim faith. But one afternoon, his life would be in the hands of those he hated the most. I was going from one place to another to do a recruitment. And that day, I had a car wreck. The car wreck was so severe, I ejected out of my car, landed on my neck, broke my neck in two places. This man came running to me, and he said, don't worry, we're going to take care of you, and everything's going to be all right. The ambulance came and picked me up. And now I go to the hospital, the orthopedic surgeon in the emergency room looked at my chart and he just said, son, we are going to take care of you and everything's going to be all right. The second day I wake up in the hospital and this uh, physical therapy, head of physical therapy come and read my chart and he turned around and he said the same thing word for word. We are going to take care of you. At first, Kamal was frightened by their words because these men were all Christians. You see, in terrorism, if they said, we're going to take care of you, you'd better run. Surgeries to repair Kamal's broken neck were successful, but recovery would take weeks. After being discharged from the hospital, he would need someone to care for him while he recuperated. Kamal had no one. So the orthopedic surgeon opened up his own home to this stranger. In his home, they put me in the choicest room, in the most beautiful thing. I became like part of their family. They didn't see me any different. And now they have a basket set for Kamal. They put in money to free my bills from the hospital. Kamal was overwhelmed with the outpouring of Christian love. As he recovered, he began to help out around the house with cooking and cleaning. They have Jewish friends that came from Israel that they support, you know. And now I'm hugging Israelis and I'm cooking for Jews. I go, what has happened to me? When Kamal was able to take care of himself and return to his apartment, the doctor had another surprise for him. He said, this is the keys to the house, and here's an extra key. This is your new car. We just want to bless you. You can come anytime you want. So I go to my home, and I go to my cold place that I have been there in months, and dust is this thick. And I just got to settle this issue with my God to know that if, if it's real or not. So I walk inside, I shut the door, I go right in the eastern window and I fall on my knees and I put my hands to the heavens and I cry up to my God. Allah, Allah, my Lord and my King, why have you done such a thing to me? I'm okay with the, with the car wreck. I'm okay with all this, but why did you put me among Christians? I'm confused. These Christians and Jews, they are, they're good people. There's nothing wrong with them. They don't want to kill us. They're not the same thing that I learned about them. 
Allah, these people have relationship with their God. These people, they cry out to the God and they answer them. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear you love me. If you're real, speak to me. I want to hear your voice. Guess what Allah said that day? Absolutely nothing. Kamal felt that because he questioned his faith, the honorable thing to do was to end his own life. So I went to reach out my guns and put it in the right place and clock out. I heard the voice. The voice knew me by name. He said, Kamal, 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 why don't you call on God of Father Abraham and Isaac and Jacob? And now I fell on my knees and I put my hands to the heavens immediately as I heard the voice. And I cried out with every fiber within me, God of Father Abraham, if you are real, would you speak to me? God of Father Abraham, if you are real, I want to know you. Well, God of Father Abraham came to a room and he filled the room with his glory. And his name was Yahweh. The Lord is one. In his hand, he has holes in his hand. He has holes in his feet. His name is Jesus. I said to him, who are you, my Lord? Who are you? He said, I am that I am. I said, I'm a simple man with a simple mind. What is that supposed to mean? He said, I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. I am the beginning. I am the end. I am everything that is in between. I have known you before I formed the foundation of the earth. I have loved you before I formed your new mother womb. Rise up. Rise up, come on. Kum. You are my warrior. You are not their warrior. And I said to him, I said, my Lord, my Lord, I will live and die for you. He said, do not die for me. I died for you that you may live. That day, instead of taking his life, Kamal gave it to Jesus. He now has a new mission and travels the country challenging Muslims to question their allegiance to Allah. My heart desire is to reach out for my brothers and sisters, the Muslim out there, 1.5 billion Muslim, that they are living out there and they have not tasted the freedom and that freedom in God. It's been over 20 years since Kamal left the Islamic faith, and even threats of violence and death cannot stop him from sharing his story. He is real. You know, and if you never experienced God before in your life, if you never tasted God, and if you think you got nothing to lose, when, when you're sitting in your home, whether you're a Muslim or, or a non-Muslim or a non-Christian or whatever you are, say, call on God of Father Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and say, if you are real, speak to me, I want to hear your voice.